So in this question, it is given that uh, a thin ring of mass 2 kg and the radius 0.5 meter is rolling on a horizontal plane with a velocity of 1 meter per second. So the ring mass of the ring is 2 kg. The radius of the ring is 0.5 meter and the velocity of the ring, let's write down u1 and that is in left direction. So negative 1 meter per second. Is a small ball of mass 0.1 kg. So another ball m2 of 0.1 kg moving with velocity. So velocity of the ball is 20 meter per second and that is in positive direction. So positive 20 meter per second. Height is 0.75 meter goes vertically up with the velocity. So velocity after the collision is vertically up. Let's consider that as positive 10 meter per second. Immediately after the collision, we need to find out. So the options are the ring has pure rotation about its stationary, its stationary center of mass. The ring comes to a complete stop. Friction between the ring and the ground is to the left and there is no friction between the ring and the ground. These are the options. Okay, so basically after the collision we need to find out the, the v and omega. So we need to form the two equations. So there can be two methods to solve this question. One method could be that I can apply the conservation of the linear momentum and angular momentum for the system because there would not be any external impulsive force. So I can do that. Another method could be I can find out the impulses uh, acted impulse which are acting on the ring and angular impulse which is acting on the ring and using that I can find out the V and omega. So let's use that. So in the x direction the impulse would, would be let's say Jx that is del Px and we know that the uh, 20 meter per second uh, that, that ball was moving with a velocity of 20 meter per second. So impulse would be 0 0.1 multiplied by 20. So 2 kg meter per second and impulse is linear this is a linear impulse so linear impulse will be equal to change in momentum in x direction for the ring which can be written down as mass of ring m1 and v final minus initial velocity this is 2 and uh, v1 is we need to find out and u1 is minus 1, right? So minus minus plus 1. And this is 2. So 2 and 2 cancel out. So v1 becomes 0. So this is the condition after the collision. So velocity of the center of mass has become 0. And now let's apply the angular impulse. So we know the linear impulse in x direction. Let's find out the linear impulse in y direction. That would be uh, del p x of the del p y of the ball and uh, that is uh, that is uh, 0.1 multiplied by 10. So that is 1 kg meter per second. So now this is the situation. This is our ring and this is hitting here. So there is a impulse acting in this direction, Jx and the another impulse acting in this direction, opposite direction, right? So in this direction, Jy, Jy. So we need to find out the total angular impulse and angular impulse as well I am denoting by J. Uh, let's, let's say that J, J is the total angular impulse that is angular impulse in x direction. So that would be Jx multiplied by this height and that height would be 0 0.75 from the ground and the radius is uh, 0 0.5 so the height this much height from the center of mass because we are calculating about the center of mass this would be 0 0.25 and uh, I'm considering this direction as positive okay let me rewrite it this direction as positive so then the jy is negative and jy is uh, jy is uh, minus 1 jy multiplied by this distance 
okay this is a distance we need to find out we know this is a distance this is a distance is uh, okay let me draw the complete diagram again so this is the center this is the point of collision this is uh, 0 0.25 this is 0 0.5 Now see this is 0 0.25 then because these are the parallel and uh, this is 0 0.25 so the remaining value we need to find out okay so the remaining value because this is 90 degree mm, remaining value will be 0 0.5 square minus 0 0.25 square so remaining side this side would be 0 0.25 minus 0 0.125 root okay 6 to 5 mm, okay let me rewrite it okay minus 0 0.0625 okay then it would become uh, 0 0.250 0 and 0 0.0625 so that would be 5 and uh, 7 and uh, 14 6 so that is 8 so 0 0.0875 okay 0 0.0875 root so 0 0.0 785 let me just check it how much is that okay so that is 0 0.295 so multiplied by 0 0.295 so it would be jx is 2 multiplied by 0 0.25 minus 1 multiplied by 0 0.295 ok so value is 205 ok so the angular impulse is 0 0.205 and now we can find out the change in the angular momentum so j is a del l and del l will be l final minus l initial right so l final will be equal to l final will be equal to uh, j plus l initial so j plus l initial j we have calculated an L initial because it was pure rolling in the left uh, direction so the angular momentum was in this direction and the angular momentum was uh, m r square divided by 2 because it's uh, a uniform it's a ring so only m r square and omega would be v by r so v is uh, 1 divided by r is 0 0.5 okay and because that was rotating like this so it is a negative plus we need to add uh, the impulse 205 so l final would be uh, m so m value is uh, 0. Point. m value is 0. Point, uh, okay m is 2 multiplied by 0 0.5 square multiplied by 1 divided by 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.205 0 0.205 okay so the value is l final is minus 1 right plus 205 so that l final is 0 0.795 kilogram uh, so that that is l final i omega right so 
this is it so l final is negative uh, 0 0.795 so now after the collision the omega is in this uh, direction and the if we calculate the point this point velocity that would be v minus omega r v0 so um, this will be in the direction of omega r omega r is in this direction so the relative velocity of the lowest point after the collision in, is in this direction so friction will act in this direction so that's why if we go to the options in this question so ring has pure rotation about its stationary center of mass after the collision uh, immediately after the collision then the second is ring comes to the complete stop yes uh, no the friction between the ring and the ground is to left and that is the correct option this is the correct option